Chicky Williams. Ever heard of her? Born in 1919 in Wheeling, she just happened to be one of the most famous country singers from Wheeling. Her name was actually Jessie Wanda Williams, but Chicky was her stage name. Chicky's music was very popular around the 1940s. She made Beyond the Sunset in 1948. She was most famous for playing on the Wheeling Jamboree Radio with her husband, Doc Williams. They were a part of a band called the Border Riders. She later died in her home in 2007 in Wheeling. Harriet Jones was born on June 3rd of 1856 in Evansburg, PA. She attended Wheeling Female College and later graduated from Women's Medical College of Baltimore in 1875. Jones specialized in gynecology and abdominal surgery, becoming the first woman licensed to practice medicine in West Virginia and held her own practice in 1886. She was elected assistant superintendent and secretary of West Virginia Anti-Tuberculosis League and lobbied to establish state sanitariums for tuberculosis treatment. She became an officer in the West Virginia Equal Suffrage Association, and after a woman won the vote in 1920, she was elected to the House of Delegates in 1924. Harriet Jones, however, passed in 1943, just after writing pamphlets such as What You Should Know About the Government of West Virginia and more. Elizabeth Zane was born in 1766 in what was originally Berkeley County, Virginia, now West Virginia. Zane lived in her native land of Virginia in the town of Wheeling, which was founded by her older brothers in 1769. As the story goes, Zane returned home to Wheeling from Philadelphia, where she had been attending school, to find Wheeling being attacked by American Indians. The town crowded in Fort Henry, much to their surprise, there was not enough gunpowder to hold the fort. As a result, Betty Zane volunteered to go fetch the extra powder from her brother's house 50 yards from the fort. You have not one man to spare. A woman will not be missed in the defense of the fort. Tis better a maid than a man should die. Reluctantly, the men let Zane go on this mission. Miraculously, her clothes were pierced but her body remained unscathed and she returned to the fort safely. Due to her help, the fort was able to hold its defense and win the attack. Today, little is known of Zane's life after she moved to Martins Ferry, Ohio. She resided there until her death in 1823. Born in Wheeling in 1914, Eleanor Stever is known as one of the first major opera singers in the United States. The American operatic soprano debuted at the Metropolitan Opera in 1940 and remained the leading artist until the 1960s. Stever became one of the first totally American trained singers to be a headliner at the Met and starred in over 50 performances while at the world famous Opera Company in New York. Her repertoire not only included performing Mozart and Strauss for the Metropolitan Opera, but also French opera and frequent appearances on radio and television shows such as The Voice of Firestone. In Wheeling as a child, Eleanor studied piano and after graduation from Warwood High School, she attended the New England Conservatory of Music in Boston. Stever was inducted into the Wheeling Hall of Fame in 1980 after celebrating the 40th anniversary of her Metropolitan Opera debut. On October 3rd, 1990 in Langhorne, Pennsylvania, Eleanor Stever passed away. In her memory, the Eleanor Stieber Music Foundation was established to help fund young, aspiring singers. Born July 17, 1914 in Wheeling, West Virginia, to William Charles Stever Sr. and Ida Amelia Nolte Stever, Eleanor Stever is an American opera singer. 
Singing was in her blood. Her mother, Ida, was a prolific amateur singer and pianist. She taught Eleanor voice and piano, took her to the concerts, and motivated her to study and sing within the community. It was her voice teacher at the New England Conservatory in Boston, William Whitney, who pushed her to transition from a piano major into singing. She later received her Bachelor of Music in 1938. In the beginning, she did a lot of radio and church work. Steber's first opera debut is in 1936 as Sento with the Commonwealth Opera in a WPA production of Wagner's The Flying Dutchman, a demanding role for a 21-year-old. In 1939, she went to New York to study with Paul Althaus, who had a great influence on her. Her career really took off when she sang for the 1940 Metropolitan Opera Auditions of the Air. Right then, a star was born. She soared in the auditions and immediately began a career in grand opera. She became one of the first fully American trained singers to become a headliner at the Met. Eleanor made her Metropolitan debut as Sophie in the opera Der Rosenkavalier. She ended up going to sing in over 50 lead roles at the Metropolitan in New York. Her last appearance for the Met was in the final gala performance of the old opera building in April 1966. Along with performing for the Metropolitan, Eleanor appeared regularly on the Voice of Firestone's television broadcast. After partial retirement in 1962, she turned her attention more and more towards recitals and concerts. Eleanor and her husband, Colonel Gordon Andrews, opened and managed a record label together called ST Slash Ann, the combination of their names. Eleanor was head of the voice department at the Cleveland Institute of Music from 1963 to 1972. She taught at the Juilliard School in New York and at the New England Conservatory of Music both in 1971 and also at the American Institute of Music Studies in Graz from 1978 to 1980 and again in 1988. She established the Eleanor Steber Music Foundation in 1975 to assist young professional singers. With RBD, Eleanor published a study, Mozart Operatic Arias, in 1988. Her autobiography, written in collaboration with M. Sloat, was published posthumously in 1992. Eleanor died October 3, 1990, but her legacy still lives on to this day. Be among the stars and let me see what spring is like on... Henrietta Foster Crossman was an American stage and film actress. She was born on September 2, 1861, and sadly passed away on October 31, 1944. She starred in the movies Pilgrimage, Among the Missing, The Moon's Our Home, and The Dark Angel. She made her debut in 1883 at the Pittsburgh Opera House in Sweet Kitty Bel Airs. She continued to work hard and eventually made her way to the big screen. She was married to Maurice Campbell. She lived a courageous life and was one of the first female actresses to make the big screen.